What's good guys, welcome back. Um, today I'm changing this Rylex SK fuse board in the garage. Not too much of a glamorous job, um, but yeah, nevertheless, that is what I've been tasked with today. Uh, got a nice new Hager RCBO board going in. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna run through the process, show you how I, how I do that. Um, and yeah, hopefully show you a nice board at the end of it. Um, whatever you're watching this on, YouTube or Instagram, make sure you're subscribed, you're following, uh, smash that like button as well, really supports the channel. Um, and yeah, let's get to it and get this isolated and start cracking on. So this is what I'm going to be using to lock off the supply to this board with. It's an Ideal Industries personal lockout kit. Um, these are now available on loadouts. If you didn't know, Ideal Industries is now um, part of loadout. It's one of the brands we, we sell and distribute. Um, so yeah, I'll put a link to all of their stuff on loadout in the description. But yeah, uh, you know, lockout kits, lockout uh, accessories, test and measurement instruments, hand tools, um, all sorts of cool stuff. So yeah, make sure you go check that out. So I've isolated what I think is the supply to this DB now, so I'm gonna get the cover off, um, prove it dead, and then I'll get started on changing the board over. As you can see, the board's safely isolated. I've proven my testers and I'm gonna crack on uh, stripping it out and changing it over. So in the interest of time, I'm just gonna, that's not in, so I'm gonna cross that out, but I'm just gonna mark the cables one, two, three, four, and uh, five and six, um, just to reference them in regards to this. And then that way I can just strip all of these out um, and crack on. The only thing is, is this five amp on the left says there's nothing in there on the board chart and on the board chart it says number six is spare so um, I'll have to have a look at that um, so we didn't actually test any of this board because it was just a blatant failure and we're gonna get everything up to scratch find any faults as we find them it's only a real small garage so you know it's not gonna be a nuisance if we can't get anything back on today um, we ran out of time and we did the original EICR and we just saw the state it was in um, this actually went <laughs> went quite mad on insta when i uploaded it just because it's an old board uh, a widow maker i like to call it just because it's all exposed all dangerous um and all stuff like that so yeah i might find i did you know check do some basic tests there shouldn't be any it should bang out at all or anything like that on the rcds um but yeah nevertheless when we test it properly we might find a few surprises so yeah i'm gonna get this all stripped out and then start sizing up the new board These are my favourite tool at the minute. They're the Nipex pliers wrench. The VDE ones don't really need VDE, I guess, because 
you should never really be gland in anything up live um, but a bit of extra confidence and I just love the VDE style with all the Nipex tools um, I do like the dual component the blue and red but yeah the VDE stuff's just not live so I like the chunky handles as well um, but yeah no tune up glands or anything like that just nice easy smooth it's like a spanner basically um, and it's got such a vast range it goes up to 52 mil um, and at lowest I think it's like 10 or something so yeah it's like a a super duper spanner basically. these boards um, obviously the main reason we're changing it is lack of RCD um, but you've got all these exposed sort of terminations here the main switch is exposed it's peppered with holes um, yeah you know it's just it just needed changing they've also got a hot tub at the end of the garden fed off of this um, so yeah you know it's just it's just better to get it, get it changed and get over. A lot of the supplies that come off of it are external, so you know we're, we're looking at RCD protection for them. Um, but yeah, just in general, you know, the board is is older than me, <laughs> um, and yeah, could just do a change in. So that's why we're getting this one out of the way. The board you saw me lock off in the house is also getting changed, um, but this was just the easier one to do today uh, with people working from home and stuff. So yeah, get this one out of the way. Uh, I don't think I can film the other one just because it's in the house. Um, but yeah, so this is the board we're fitting. Um, it's a Hager, um, just a. RCBO board it's got an SPD in it as well we are going to be fitting an SPD in the main house um, but we just fit in the standard to be honest with you we just price it in we don't even give the client the option just because it should be standard um, it's not a lot extra uh, we don't find anyway um, and with the amount of domestic work we do which isn't a lot we don't need to be that competitive um, so we're not worried about you know dropping things out which we deem necessary um, just to be competitive on price um, so yeah it's a type 2 here he has got some expensive kit in the garage anyway so you know it's not a complete like overkill it is warranted um, but I know some people will say um, you know you could fit a type 1 and 2 in the main house and, and it would be sweet but yeah we're just we're just fitting this because because we can basically um, Hager boards are real nice we fit them they're probably our go-to domestic board at the minute um, sometimes Schneider but more time um, more time it's Hager and then yeah we've just got a load of the compact RCBOs to go in so these you know you've probably seen these before but they're pretty sweet um, no functional earth they just have the neutral and um, they're really compact as well no bigger than an MCB really um, and yeah quite nice little breakers so yeah I'm gonna get the board mounted start building the board and start getting these cables into it um, and then yeah do a time lapse or something just because you won't want to see everything every minute but um, yeah so far so good So um, I'm just building the board up now, oh my god, Hager, Hager, Hager. Um, so that's just falling off, I'm gonna have to go get a, um, <laughs> I'm gonna have to go get another board, um, because that just won't do, will it? Um, so that changes the plan a bit. I'm gonna have to put this back together and um, yeah, go get another another board from Hager um, from our wholesalers. So yeah, um, 
to be honest, that is the first time that's happened. Um, that is that is bad press for Hager, but um, yeah, that's never happened before. I think it's just a dodgy, dodgy punch where they've sort of they've sort of punched that in. Um, so yeah, but um, yeah, okay. I'm gonna go get another board and then um, I'll be back. Hager board. We shouldn't have any <laughs> any issues. Get the cover off. Get this out of the way. Don't always do this, but nine times out of ten, um, before I even think about it, I'm I'm taking it. With the dim rail out and stuff just because it makes life so much easier when you're prepping the board and sizing the board up, mounting the board and stuff like that. So yeah, I'd like to get that all out the way. So you've just got the carcass. This looks nice and safe. Yeah, I'm gonna go top entry. Um I've got some whisker stuffing glands and I've also got the wind certs. Um, so I actually got given this following a, in a lecture a long time ago but um, what I like about these is they make the little inserts so it grips around TNEs properly and you get an actual seal rather than um, you know sort of like a false seal they also do these dual ones for, um, for like 215s they do ones for like smaller Smaller circular cables, it's a dual, like, dual ones, good for like two daters and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, I'm gonna be using a few of them as well just to get a good seal around the top. Right, so one, two, three, four, five, six. I just took that pretty slow just because I was drilling into a preformed knockout so I didn't want to go health lever and then knock this 40 mil and uh, this 32 mil yeah this 32 mil uh, knockout out and then be left with a hole too big so yeah just take it nice and easy to round that off um, and now I'm just gonna file it now just to neaten those edges up try get these um, bits of rod out which I think are they're, they're, they're in there pretty tight these will all reach anyway or I could put it higher no I can't because they're in the way although that one slides in nice and high um, gain a bit of slack and yeah it'll be at head height then so that'll work quite well that's what I'm going to go for. First, I'm going to get all my stuffing glands in, um, get that all the inserts in and stuff like that, get all prepped, and then it's just a case of throwing it on the wall. So, these little inserts. Last time we used them, you have to actually take that out to get this in. That's it. There you go. A nice dedicated um, gasket around the cable rather than that thing, which is um, never going to compress correctly in, uh, in the stuffing gland. And there you go, like so, converted. So I'm going to do that for all of the stuffers because they're all, um, they're all taking tears.
I'm going to take these bolts off just because um, I don't want that to dictate where the board's going to go. So I don't want to get the grinder out because I'll probably just use a tack saw. There we go. This one pushes in, so I'm not too worried about that one. Um, now, we should be able to centre this up at a nice height, yeah. Cool. We'll drop it a little bit lower. About there. I don't know if I've mentioned these, but these Milwaukee MX4 SDS bits, I'm really, really impressed with. They've got like a cross tip on the end, but yeah, they just chew through concrete like, like it's nothing really. Um, really impressed with them. Sweet, so just go get some fixings from the van now. We'll get this on the wall. jump onto a time lapse now um, get all this prepped show you sort of how I prep it for a sort of neatish board it's only going to be so neat given what I'm working with
RCBO leads, I'm going to be trimming these off and just putting a ferrule on them. Um, I'm using the SWA ferrule kit. Um, it's wicked. I'll show you it in a sec. It's not like the octopus jaw ones, it's just more like the standard ones. Um, comes with a load of ferrules in the kit as well and it's calibrated which is important. Um, so yeah, at the minute it's calibrated anyway, it will have to get re-calibrated re um, in about six months time. So yeah, um, there's a bit of a feral fashion at the minute where people in domestic boards are just putting them on everywhere. I just tend to put them on the RCBOs. You can put them on like the Hager connections, but I just feel like you're messing with the board a bit. They've already been tinned and um, sort of crimped anyway. So yeah, um, really necessary there. Um, and you also see people putting them on the solid cores. Ferrules are not for solid cores. Um, therefore, you know, your fine stranded flex, even like this SWA, which is like um, drawn copper. Um, you know, some people call it seven strand and stuff like that. A ferrule, you wouldn't even put a ferrule on that. You'd want like a pin crimp or a pin terminal, reducing terminal sort of thing on that. Um, yeah, ferrules are really just for your fine, fine stranded flexes. So get all these loaded up. I'm going to try not bite in the comments because um, I haven't got my torque driver on me. So tomorrow when I'm doing the other board, I'm going to make sure I get it tonight. And then tomorrow I can um, torque all these up properly. So I'm just going to do them pretty tight, but not too tight. You actually find with a torque driver that um, you, you're actually over tightening in most of the time when you actually use a torque driver you realize a lot of the the connections you do without one are over tightened way way too over tightened um, especially for like the mcbs and the cables within them um so yeah but um i'm just doing these up pretty tight with this and then i'll loosen them off um and then tighten them up properly with a torque driver Board is done, I'm just going to show you it before I go and remove the lock off, liven it up, um, liven it up, and then carry out some testing. So, here it is. Um, I like to tie up all the neutrals here. I used to cut them, sometimes I still do, but if you've got the space to shove them down the back, then I just do that rather leave the length on them. They've been ferruled, everything else hasn't. Um, I try not to go too mad on straight lines and stuff because you will be here uh, all day. Um, but yeah, I still am a bit OCD with it. But yeah, uh, compression glands along the top with the wind certs in, just bringing down everything like so. Um, it's not the best looking setup, but we're in a garage um, and it's a far lot better than, um, than it was. So yeah, haven't banjoed the SWA just because it's going to be done the other end and we're not relying on it. Um, so yeah, to be honest with you, I haven't got a gland pack for it anyway, and this one's missing the banjo. And the other end hasn't been made off at all. It's just had the armor to strip back and then lashed into a plastic board. So I'm actually gonna put it away with a banjo properly, the other end, get a gland pack for tomorrow and do a proper job. Um, like I said as well, I'm gonna come back and talk all these up properly. Um, at the minute, they're just tight. Um, but yeah, I'll come back and talk all them up. 
um, tomorrow when I get my torque driver back. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go liven it up, prove it live, and then do a little bit of testing. Right, so um, board is energized again. I'm just gonna prove it on. I already have, but I'll just prove it for camera um, and turn it all on to the best time. Hopefully nothing bangs out. Just bring you in. As you can see, we're all livened up there. Like I say, um, I already tested, we got an earth, um, so that's all sweet. Obviously, I'm going to test it properly as well. Um, let's turn everything on for the first time as well. Sweet. So, yeah, as expected, nothing's banged out, everything's sweet. Obviously, like I said, I'm going to test it all properly now, um, so that when the cert is made satisfactory after I change the board tomorrow, I can update it, put this on there again with all RCD test results and everything like that. Sweet. So yeah, I'm gonna start testing up. I might film it, it might be part of this video, it might not. If not, then you'll probably see me on the outro. Um, but yeah, I'm not really sure how long this video is. So I might decide when I come to editing. But yeah, either way, I will see you in a bit. Right, so that is me all done and dusted. Uh, just got in the van um, a lot later than I thought. So um, when I was tested, I got all tested, labelled up in the end. When I was testing, one of the circuits um, ended up feeding a another DB in another shed at the bottom of the garden, which no one knew about. Um, and there was like an old pond and stuff, so there's just live ends just in the garden and, and all that sort of stuff, mad stuff really. So I've just been running around like a madman trying to sort them out of the clients. I couldn't film much just for sort of client privacy. Um, but yeah, it was an eventful end to a pretty chill day. Um, but yeah, nevertheless, um, that's pretty much it for this one. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video, you found it entertaining and possibly insightful. Um, it's not the most exciting job in the world, it's just a little garage board. But um, content is few and far between at the minute. Um, I can't always film on my commercial jobs, I can't always film on my on any of my jobs. So um, when I can film, I like to film. Um, but yeah, anyway, enough of me waffling on. As I said at, as I said at the start of the video, uh, whatever you're watching this on, Instagram, YouTube, please make sure you follow it or subscribed and, and you're hitting that like button. It really supports what I'm trying to do and the content creation and stuff. Um, and yeah, as always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.